Hello, my friends, how are you doing? I hope you're doing really awesome. In this video, I'm sharing with you what I learned from my latest five-figure launch. And um, this is for you if you're not getting the results that you want from all of your marketing efforts, if you know that there's more for you, if you know there's more potential in making an offer, launching something out there in the marketplace, or you just want to know how to get more conversions from your launches. A launch is basically a campaign that leads up to presenting an offer to the world in the most simplest form. It's launching a new offer or launching an existing offer where maybe you've made some little tweaks or present it in a slightly different way or these new bonuses and things like that. So there's two ways that I launch. I do it through social media and email, and then I also do it through events. Those are the two different ways. So I'm going to give you a few important things to think about in this live session. And uh, if you want to learn from someone else's mistakes, you are in the right place. And from get some wisdom um, from basically some hard won lessons that will help you in your business, uh, whether that's running events or launching through, you know, challenges, um, through your website, through um, your email, through your existing channels, your funnels. Um, so if you want to capture some gold, you might want to make some notes, grab a pen and paper. Great to have you here. By the way, if you're here live, I would love it if you pop a hashtag live in the comments. I really appreciate knowing that you're here. I like to know you're here and please interact. Please write comments. And um, if you're here watching the replay, just put a hashtag replay and please interact and share because I always love hearing from you. I love to know what you find helpful and useful and what your favorite things are are and what your experiences are always come back in and make sure I comment and reply to all of your comments so appreciate you so let's dive in um so I launch um usually every quarter events every quarter I've been doing that for the last six or seven years and I've been using a strategy um of workshops that consistently produces between $10,000 and $20,000 each time I launch. So the strategy that I use is every quarter, at the moment, this is how I do it. Uh, I launch three, I, I run three workshops every quarter. Two of them are full day workshops and one of them is an express version. It's like an express um, shorter version in the evening. So I run them on a Tuesday and a Saturday and then usually a Tuesday again in the evening. And every time I do it, I get a bunch of new clients and a bunch of new learnings, which I love to share in my community. So I want to share with you three things I learned from my latest five-figure launch. And here they are. Number one is make decisions from your future and not your past. Make decisions from your future, not your past. In my latest launch, this was the advice that I was given by one of my mentors. So I decided that I was going to change the name of my event. And I sent the new name to my graphic designer um, and got everything updated. And I was really organized and prepared. And we went back and forth for ages on the design. We changed a lot of elements. We He changed all these different things. There's four different image sizes that you need when you're launching a, a new event. You also need emails, social media posts, um, stories, all of the graphics, all of the copy, the landing page, the funnels, all of that. So I really liked the name. I felt that because I'd invested this time and this money and this energy and the back and forth with the graphic designer and all the marketing promotion, I didn't want to change it. Then I spoke to one of my mentors and I asked for feedback and he suggested I change the name that I decided on. By the way, I always recommend that you run the name of your event the landing page for your event, because the landing page, the, the page that people land on to register for your event, the name and the email is so important to get right. It's so important to get right, especially um, if you're running Facebook ads to it, you're putting money behind it. If you're putting a whole lot of time um, with your organic social media and emails and all the different elements of your campaign. So I always run my landing page through multiple mentors because the landing page is the the marketing copy that's going to make sure you attract the right people so I run it past multiple mentors coaches who are experienced a landing page has 
21 different elements that need to be on it in order to give it the highest possible chance of conversion. This is what I teach my clients. You don't want to leave it to chance. So I've run my landing pages past dozens and dozens of mentors that I trust and respect. And they've all suggested different tweaks. So that becomes an asset. So you always want to test and measure in marketing. You always want to test and measure your landing page, your Facebook ads, your everything. And so I'm constantly refining and tweaking and changing and make, making iterations to everything that I'm putting out in, in the world. And I recommend that you do too. I personally have four coaches who I see regularly because everyone sees from a different lens. Some people see an image that could be improved. Some people think a headline, we could test the headline and do an A-B split test. Some people go, oh, that copy, we, we could tweak this word or this formatting. So everyone's got their own experience. And so I don't just trust it to just myself. Absolutely not. And also, um, like I'm part of a goals group with her business. So I trust the women in there. I see two mentors every month as part of she mentors. Uh, every time I see them, I say, hey, can you have a look at my landing page? I'm part of multiple business programs and mentors. So that is really the lesson that I want to share with you is to listen to people who are going to give you some feedback that maybe it kind of stings a little bit. Maybe it's a hard thing to hear. So Cham Tang, who gave me that um that piece of feedback, shout out to you, Cham. He saw that I was struggling to change the name. Um, and he said to me, Kat, he saw that I was getting like emotional, like, oh, I've put in all this time and energy and money. Um, and he said, Kat, make decisions from your, from your future, not your past. And he said, just change it. Don't worry about it. Move on. And it, it was gold advice. Thank you, Cham. Because a lesson that I learned was to constantly check in to see whether I'm holding on to things out of emotion. You've probably heard of the concept um, of sentiment. You know, as humans, we can get really attached to things that we've we've done, that we've put time, money, and energy into, and we don't want to always let it go. <laughs> Do you relate? Have you had a situation like that? It's sometimes known as sunk cost. Like sunk cost is where you've got a it's a retrospective cost. It's where you've already made an investment. It's already recurred a cost and you can't recover it. And sometimes we just hold on to something because of the time and the energy and the money that we've invested and we can get super reluctant to change it, but we need to. We need to in business. We need to be able to let things go that aren't working. Um, it's like people holding to, onto stocks too long because they've held on, held on, held on, and they don't want to admit that it's just not working. And this can happen in business where we put in all this work and we don't want it to be a waste. But innovation is more important than clinging to the past. So we need to make sure that we're distinguishing between emotion and logic. We also need to make sure that we're doing what our ideal clients want, not what we want. Because I, I thought that my ideal clients were wanting a certain word, um, but champ hold the group that we're in. And I didn't personally really like the name, but it's not about what I like. It's about what works. It's about what your idol client wants because you're here in the journey and they're back here in the journey to achieving that result. So we've got to think in their mind, not in ours. We've got to think what they want. So my recommendation is to get feedback that from people that aren't going to say, yeah, it's just fine. Um, otherwise you won't grow. You've got to seek people out um, who are willing to give you feedback that's going to get you results and be prepared for their answer and be prepared to change. Choose people that are strong in their in their opinions and people that you respect, people that, who will give you that direct feedback. It's the fastest way to grow. If a strategy is not working for you and your audience, sometimes you just got to ditch it before it costs you more time and energy and money. Sometimes we can get emotionally attached, but um, like for example, I was talking to one of my mentors today and she said, it's like, I've got this, um, she said, I relate because I've got an attachment to trading time for money. It's really comfortable. It's familiar. And she mentioned a quote that I really love by John D. Martini. He says, optimal growth occurs at the border of support and challenge, support and challenge, not just grow, 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 take a massive leap into the unknown, freak yourself out send your nervous system into chaos, but support and challenge. So maybe you need to do things uh, one step at a time. Maybe you need to get the support around you to when you're going through those changes and challenge. 
But the result of that decision was my Facebook ads did the best that they've ever done. With Facebook ads, the name of an event is really a big factor in the success, the, the wording. And um, the ads did better than they've ever done. I was getting registrations for less than $15 per rego, which is really good. So there are times we just need to persist and be consistent with what we're doing and just allow our skills to develop. Like if you do a video and no one comes and no one comments and no one likes it and no one sees it, it doesn't mean give up on it. So things like that, you've just got to develop your skills. If you run an event and no one comes, it doesn't mean give up on it because as you get better and better at marketing and presenting and developing those skills, your results will improve. But there's also times where we need to admit when we're holding on to something for an emotional reason that's never going to work or it's going to require too much time and energy to make it work and we need to be willing to let it go. So I'm going to leave that with you in case anything's popping into your mind right now. Number two, going deeper is more valuable than going wider. Going deeper is more valuable than going wider. People ask me a lot about what is value when it comes to content. What is value? How do I provide value without giving away all my secrets? What do I give to my paid clients versus what do I give for free? And so it's a question I get asked all the time. And I've got a lot to say about this because it's taken me years and years and years to refine what value is in my own mind and embody it. And I learned years ago that less is more. Learned it, but it's taken me a long time to embody it. But it really landed in my latest um, workshop where I actually stripped a lot of the content out and I went deeper into what I did share. And this has taken me a long time to realize that value is not adding more and more and more. And it's not adding lots of different things. It's adding fewer things, but going deeper into them. I had a fear that people would think that what I was sharing wasn't valuable enough if there wasn't a lot of it. But when there's a lot of it, what happens is we skim the surface, we skim across a lot of things, and people end up feeling overwhelmed. It also means we don't take the time to really convince someone that this is the thing. If we want people to take action on what we're sharing with them, we need to drill down so they're convinced this is the thing. Because more information is not value if people aren't going to take action on it, right? So when we go deeper, when we make sure it stays in their mind so that they take action on it, they become inspired to actually do it. There's no point giving people all the steps. Here's the steps of how to do a Facebook ad if they're not convinced that a Facebook ad is the right thing for them to do. The how doesn't matter if the why is not strong enough. You might want to write that down. The how doesn't matter. If the why is not strong enough, why should you do it? Someone tells you to, I'll oh, just run an event. Okay, here's how you do it. You set up a Zoom link. You do this, you, you know, you jump into the action steps of what to do. If someone's not like, is this the right thing for me to do? Why should I do it? Without the why, the how is useless. So the longer you spend in the why, actually, the more value someone gets because it's a perception shift that is valuable. When people aren't convinced on something, when they haven't had that belief shift, when they haven't had a new way of looking at something, they won't take action. So value is not nice to know content. Here's a whole heap of information. If it's just nice to know content, people just forget it because it doesn't have enough importance. So value is when someone has really got their convincer on that this is the thing you need. They've digested it for you and they only present the information that you need. So more is not better. I think some of this stems from our parents' generation or our grandparents' generation where it's that scarcity mentality from the war, from the um, like the Great Depression. You know, I think there's still remnants of that, that that have come through where we think more is better. You know, we think a 400-page manual is going to be better than I don't know, a short masterclass or a 30 minute video that's that's actually going to get us from A to B faster. We think that these things are valuable, but the last three years has really proven that that's not the case. So many people are overwhelmed and, and they're burned out from all the information coming from it. 
So um, we need to make sure that there's feeling, there's emotion attached with what they're sharing, what we're sharing. That's valuable. Actually, there's four, four things I wrote down that I've called four essentials of value that you might want to write down. These are these are the things that I believe are the four essentials to giving value. Number one, it's about the why. So the why is the most important thing. It's the inspiration. It's the motivation to actually do it. It's inspiring people to want to take action. It's showing people the consequences if they don't take action. People don't just want the steps. Otherwise, you just kind of feel like you're in university or school. Like when I go to a masterclass or a workshop, I really want to be convinced on something. I want someone to get me feeling something so it's the why it's the inspiration the motivation number two it's the how to and the strategy a lot of people don't add this they add a whole lot of why and motivation but they don't add what they need to do to actually make it work so we do need the strategy we need the steps but we've got to start with the inspiration the motivation so the why the the how to and the strategy number three we actually need to be the role model of living what we're teaching we need to be in integrity otherwise we can be just grabbing stuff from chat gpt we can just grab stuff from the internet and regurgitate it but if we're not living it if it's not lived wisdom and experience like what i'm sharing with you right now i didn't google this i didn't ask a robot for this this is lived experience this is from being in the trenches doing it and then we're living it, we become that role model and in, in integrity. And then number four is the support. It's all the back-end support, running a tight ship in your business, being a great leader, putting those systems and processes in place through automation, through tech, through team, whatever you need to do to look after your clients so that it's a beautiful experience, it's a seamless experience, making sure people are supported in the way that they need to be supported that is a key essential of value. It's not just teach and run away. I was talking to a mentor today. We do a swap mentor session and she was telling me a story of a 12-month business program she was in. And the first few months, the business owner showed up for the group Zoom calls and then she hired um, someone else to show up. And then the last few months, she just completely dropped off. And the amount of people in the program just dropped off because she wasn't showing up she'd sold it as I'm going to be supporting you and then kind of disappeared and so you know I think that support supporting people it's not just giving information but making sure that they've got it making sure they get their questions answered that there's community there's there's um, discussion there's accountability to helping someone actually get that result I think is really important that's why in all my workshops, there's a level of interaction. It's not just me doing this one way. Here's the information by it's, you know, when I'm working with clients, it's always making sure that they're looked after and supported. Welcome all of you that are here. So good to see you here. Um, can see some people, some familiar faces and some new people. Not that I can see your faces. I can see that you've put hashtag live. Thank you. Um, number three, make decision, making decisions for the long term is a smart business move. Making decisions from the long term for the long term is a smart business move. As I look at my journey more than ever, I think it's critical to think longer term than I used to in my business. And I was talking about this tonight in my inner circle. I was talking about we need to have consistent and instant both instant like we need fast cash fast clients but we need to constantly be building we need to constantly be thinking long term humans are wired to think short term we are it's the inherent problem when it comes to long-term thinking because of our survival instincts we're pretty much hardwired to focus on the urgent the immediate the pressing right so sometimes we can just get kind of in the survival mode and we can make decisions um, we think, oh, we'll make decisions about our future later. But the longer that we focus on only on managing the moment, the greater the risk of losing in the long term. And this has really become apparent to me because I've run 
I think over 350 events now. And every time I run them, I get feedback from people and I give myself feedback. And it's just the tweaks and the iteration, the tweaks and the iteration over time consistently that has been what's brought the results. And it's really been driven home to me recently that long-term thinking is where you're building something. You're not starting something, it doesn't work, you scrap it and you start something else. I call this half-built bridges. A lot of people will do something and then it's not working and so they just kind of run. Um, there's a lot... There's a lot to be said about sticking with something because if, if let's say, you know, people don't sign up, they don't make the money that they hope for, they don't get the clients they want, they can just scrap it and start from scratch. But often it is about persisting. It's knowing when to give something up, but it's, it's also knowing that we need to think long-term, we need to be patient. And I really saw this recently that I saw the effect of past cat who has really done the work of just showing up, showing up, showing up, showing up and going, okay, this was the very first workshop I've ever run where I looked at the feedback form and every single person put, there's nothing I would improve. There's nothing I would change. And I want to keep growing and keep getting feedback. Of course I do, but it was just a really beautiful moment of like, all that work that I've done, you know, sometimes we think it's this big thing that we need to do and suddenly we get a result. And so a lot of people are resistant to that kind of slow, steady growth and improvement. But if you're, if you create something, you create the slides, you create the landing page, the funnel, the emails, the reminders, the text, like all the different things that you need to do. Once you've done that work, you can repeat it. You don't have to start again. So let's get you creating that asset if you haven't already. Um, you know, the, the asset that you can just keep tweaking and changing and building and growing because you've got that long-term thinking. You've got um, the data and now you know what to focus on. Otherwise, you're kind of just guessing. If you just keep starting from scratch all the time, every step gives you more data. It shows you what you need to work on and what you need to improve and change. There's a great quote by... Andrina Sawyer, she says, entrepreneurs should always aim to play the long game. Instant gratification cannot build a legacy. I really realized this during um, my last launch that it's all about refining the same thing, refining the same thing. It's like if you went to McDonald's and the whole menu was completely changed, it wouldn't be McDonald's. You know, they have launched the same, you know, they launched these special things, but I don't know, I haven't been to McDonald's for a long time, but they have the classic, I'm sure, they have the classic Big Mac, the quarter pounder, the fillet of fish, and they keep that on the menu. And so rather than throwing things away, you know, I know that I show up with so much confidence and conviction and certainty because I've kept running this program over and over. Sometimes you need to just get comfortable with the repetition. Um, you know, sometimes the progress is slower than I like, but I'm committed to seeing this out for years to come you know building a solid business takes time and it takes work and sometimes when we rush for results that are harder than we can handle we we can make poor decisions so long-term thinking is a smart move um, there's a quote I want to end with by Gary Vanderchuk he says patience is hard because it's important it's the core ingredient to most people's success Take a breath and be grateful for what you've already accomplished. Then put your head down for a decade and put in the work. <laughs> and I love that. If you want help with this, if you want help with launching your next marketing campaign, workshop, event, offer, whatever it is that you're doing in your business, if you want to know how to get booked out with clients consistently and reach those consistent months, if you would love to do a five-figure launch, I would love to help you. So just send me a message, just DM me, um, DM me anytime on Facebook and I will have a chat with you and see how I can help you. I hope this has been really helpful for you tonight. Um, I'd love to know what stood out to you, what, what jumped out to you, what was like, yep, that was the thing that I need to remember right now. What's been a good refresher for you? Um, I'd love to know how you found the video. So please pop it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, in the meantime, keep showing up, keep sharing and keep shining because the world is waiting for your words. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Big love and talk to you soon.